Hi, welcome to Curiosity, the monthly science show brought to you by Young Academy of India. And guess what? This is our anniversary show. And it has been a year, you know, unbelievable, isn't it? The journey has started way back in May in 2020 uh, during the lockdown period, isn't it? So this is the episode number 21st. And of course, more than a year. Uh, of course, we are uh, out of the lockdown, but still the pandemic goes on. We don't know how long, isn't it? So as usual, this episode, uh, we cover stories across the discipline. So let's start the show with psychology and behavior related stories that has happened last month. You know, those paradigm shift stories, uh, that selected stories that we will cover up. The first story is about suicide. Uh, you might know that men are a lot more prone for suicide than women. Multiple lines of evidence we have it. And this is commonly blamed on the men's unwillingness to seek help and talk about their problem. You know, men were accused that they don't really seek help. You know, it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, that, that hurts their ego. And men are so egoist. That is what a common perception in earlier psychological studies. But the latest studies, uh, study says that it's untrue. You know, that kind of judgment, the sweeping generalization is never good. And you cannot say that all men do not seek help, you know, uh, while women always seek help. No, there are many women who uh, shy away from seeking help when, uh, during the time of mental distress and depression, you know. And that is what, right? The new paper disputes that conventional view and emphasizing instead on the socio-economic issues as well as obstacles to the healthcare access. So it's pretty interesting for me. Uh, next story is about the, the labor union. The strong labor union substantially reduces the poverty for both the, uh, you know, unionized households as well as non-unionized households, households as well as companies. So if you are happy living in, uh, you know, in a, in a household or in a corporation where unions are there in your vicinity, then, uh, you know, the chances are high that your company will also take some ethical practices that the other companies are doing it. It's very interesting, you know. So unions are really important, especially labor unions that actually increases the minimum age here in India too. Some states do have strong labor unions where you, you can see that the minimum wage, for example, teaching or nurse, you know, the minimum wage of, of the uh, uh, private sector nurse was, uh, as well as the, the college teacher are much higher in certain states comparing with other states because of the uh, existence of the uh, labor union. You know, that is exactly what this study says. Conservatives are more susceptible than liberals to believing political falsehoods. That is what the new US study finds. And the main driver is the glut of right-leaning misinformation in the media and information environment. That is what the, the research shows. So, uh, you know, conservatives are more prone to believing in fake news and conspiratory theories, conspiracy theories. That is exciting, you know, the political dimensions on uh, the knowledge gap. A fourth story is about the ban on flavored vaping may have led to the teenage to the, the cigarettes. So very interesting, right? If you ban the cigarettes, uh, then uh, kids are more prone for vaping. And now if you ban the vape, they become more prone for cigarettes. So, uh, you know, banning is never an answer, right? Uh, if you ban, of course, the drugs, then counterfeit drugs, the sale becomes a lot more higher and it will have its own ramifications on health and community welfare, isn't it? So after the ban's implementation, the high school students odds of smoking conventional cigarettes doubled in the San Francisco school district relative to the trends in the districts without the ban. Very interesting. Fifth story is about a study that shows that the teaching kids social responsibility, like how to settle the fights and how to seek for the help, remember that is very important for depression as well, can reduce school bullying. So, you know, the, the best strategy to reduce the bullying, if you want your kids uh, not to suffer this bullying, uh, is uh, tell them uh, to seek help, you know, and also to set how to settle this kind of uh, petty fights. So that, that is really, really important. So students who said that the teachers encouraged them to care about others and fostered a classroom environment with clear rules also said that they felt both less aggressive and less victimized. 
especially when it comes to bullying. Sixth story is about, according to a thorough analysis of 437 studies on narcissism around the world, there appears to be a strong correlation between narcissism and aggression. So narcissism is extreme self-love, you know. So it's one of the dark triad traits, right? Machiavellianism is another one. Sociopathy is yet another one. So narcissism is, and aggression is highly connected, regardless of the gender, age, and country of residence. Even narcissism, within what is considered to be the normal range, is linked to aggression. So, you know, if you are a narcissist, then you should learn how to control your aggression and even passive aggression. You know, passive aggression means that uh, indirect aggression, aggressive behavior that is really bad for the personality concerned. Seventh story is about relationship. So relationships at work matter greatly to our well-being. So at work, the relationship, especially relationship with your boss, that has a huge effect on your psychological well-being. And perhaps no work relationship affects us more strongly than the one with our manager. In fact, people who have uh, leave their job frequently report that the manager is their most important reason for doing so. So that has led me to an old aphorism that you don't quit your job, but you quit your manager. You know, so most of the time this resignation is because of the bad manager, isn't it? So it's really important. Uh, eight stories about spanking, you know, that those corporeal punishment, especially for the kids, the parents spank or teachers spank, isn't it? It has got effects on the early childhood behaviors and similar to those of the adverse childhood experience, that is ACE, such as physical and emotional abuse or neglect, parental mental illness, parental substance use and others. That is what the study in the Journal of Pediatrics has found. So spanking never helps. So it, it, it indeed backfires, you know, so it, it will give a, a, a kind of a childhood trauma. So never spank. And if you are an early childhood teacher, stop spanking right away. Uh, ninth story is about a new research that shows that belief in supernatural evil is a robust predictor of support for the policies that expand the gun rights. You know, so if you, uh, you know, if you arg argue for the gun rights, uh, that means a right to possess the gun and other uh, weapons, a uh, chance are high that you believe in this evil, you know, God and evil. I don't, <laughs> you know, it didn't come surprise to me because these are conservatives, right? Usually conservatives are the people who with extreme religious belief and belief in God and evil. And those groups are the ones who crave for the gun rights, who argue uh, passionately, emotionally for the right to possess the gun. You know, at the same time, libertarians are more or less against the gun rights. They don't want it. They are more into peace, you know. So that exactly is what this new study says. Ten stories that the researchers focused on the mental health benefits associated with the playing video games to address the symptoms of depression and anxiety. Exciting news, isn't it? If you play video games, uh, you know, that, that could be a, a good option to alleviate the depression. So if you are depressed, then uh, maybe the psychiatrist can prescribe you uh, playing the video game, you know, that is a, a no-brainer solution, isn't it? Readily accessible, inexpensive and uh, internationally available and stigma-free, isn't it? Uh, playing the video game, exciting. Coming next is humanities, politics, policies and arts related stories. 11th story. Large landlords file evictions at two to three times the rate of the small landlords. Uh, this disparity is not driven by the characteristics of the tenants they rent to. So irrespective of the tenants, uh, you know, the small landlords actually file much lesser ev eviction, but large landlords do file much more the eviction notice. Uh, the reason is very clear. The land landlords are super rich. They can hire an attorney while the small one cannot fight, you know. And for small landlord, the organizational informality and personal relationships with the tenants make the eviction a morally fraught decision. Usually uh, small landlords have got intimate or personal relationships with their tenants. They know at least in person, right? While large landlord in the sense that massive, you know, uh, apartment complex, they hardly knew who is staying there, right? So for them, eviction is very easy. 12th story, the study that shows that one in 20 workers are in useless jobs or bullshit jobs, 
you know the jobs that serve no purpose uh, if you think that you are you, it's time for you to introspect is it really worth that job so this is the study was conducted in the uk you know far fewer than the previously thought however david graeber was right to link the people's attitudes towards their job and their psychological well-being the famous author and this is something that the employers and the society as a whole should think seriously isn't it so what is the purpose if uh, you are not actually working while people pays you and you are not getting the job satisfaction one in 20 workers in uk uh, a situation might be much much worse off elsewhere in the world you know 13th story the toxic workplaces increase the risk of depression by 300 percentage 300 percentage toxic workplace alone so the study has found that full-time workers employed by the organization that fail to prioritize their employees mental health uh, and well mental well-being have threefold increased risk of being diagnosed with the depression uh, very alarming story isn't it by the way recently i read a story in japan that they introduce a four day work week you know so uh, they will have to work only four days three days extended weekends they have for their mental well-being excited isn't it we have to uh, we hope elsewhere in the world also adopt this uh, interesting practice adopted by the japan 14th story is that uh, a quarter of adults don't want the children and they're still happy you know so the study used a set of three questions to identify the child free individuals separately from parents and other types of non parents so common belief is that if you don't have child then it's kind of stigmatic in very conventional societies and uh, people used to think that uh, you know if you adopt a life without child then you're kind of loner but that is not the case that is what this new study says 15th story of the week is that uh, a new study found that the Americans dramatically overestimate the number of migrants affiliated with the gangs and children being trafficked and that this overestimation contributes to dehumanization of the migrants, a lack of empathy for their suffering and individuals views of the immigration policy. So you know that we really have to change the way that we think about immigrants, uh, you know, this kind of like uh, uh, this yeah this uh, alienation of the immigrants is very common across the world uh, be it in the US or be it in the Western Europe or Japan you know so this is a common perception that the immigrants are bad guys and girls uh, which is incorrect you know that is completely skewed representation yeah 16 people who support ban on pornography tend to hold more sexist views about women very interesting you know uh, well, it didn't come surprise to me because usually people who really uh, take, uh, you know, who seek out the ban for porn and other things are uh, conservatives. And conservatives tend to be a lot more sexist. You know, they are against the gender equality, isn't it? So that is what the news today says. 17. Physically attractive individuals are substantially more than uh, otherwise similar unattractive individuals. The beauty wage gap is the largest among black women. Uh, it's very, very important. No? If you're tall uh, and lean and uh, muscular, especially for, for the, 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 the uh, guys, you know, you tend to earn higher than, uh, you know, the very, very short and stout individual who doesn't look that appeasing you know so that is really important that uh, 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 you know something that we really have to think about while talking about inclusivity you know and even job reservations so it's time for us to think that you know we should actually reserve some positions for uh, you know not so good looking individuals right because that social uh, you know that uh, judgmentality that we really have to change the way that we treat uh, the less beautiful so-called individuals the beauty has nothing to do with the work productivity though right but that mentality we really have to change it 18 the u.s life expectancy decreased by 1.87 years between 2018 and 2020 a drop not seen since world war ii according to the new research from the virginia commonwealth university the university of colorado boulder and urban institute Definitely this, uh, uh, you know, uh, decrease in life expectancy has something to do with the COVID-19. But if you compare that with other rich countries, the, you know, the developed country, uh, it's really bad, the dip in the US. 
uh, of course, the U.S. has been really uh, disproportionately being affected by COVID-19. That is the reason for it, for sure. Next is technology and physics related stories, 19 story. Scientists developed cheap and easy method to extract lithium from seawater. Very interesting. I never knew that, uh, you know, you can extract the lithium from seawater and seawater contains a lot more lithium than uh, how we, can, we extract by traditional mining. You know, very, very interesting. Coming next is biodiversity, environment and evolution related stories, 20th story. A new study finds that uh, because mongooses, that is mere cats, don't know which offspring belong to which moms, or mongoose pups are given equal access to food and care, thereby creating a more equitable mongoose society. Very interesting, no? They don't know uh, which individual are this, you know, they, they, uh, the moms who cannot identify uh, which is my kid. So they, they treat all the kids with equally, you know, that is equitable, social, communist society in mongoose, you know, very interesting. Ironically, mongoose has the highest intraspecific murder rates. The most murderous animal in the world is mongoose. You know, lots of, uh, you know, intraspecific means within one species, the uh, conflicts are really alarming, you know, really common in mongoose. We are cats. 21. The amount of heat the earth traps has doubled in just 15 years. Approximately 90% of the excess energy from the imbalance ends up in the ocean. And warming the ocean temperature has led to acidification, impact on the fish and other marine biodiversity. So uh, the globe is warming uh, tremendously. Yesterday I came to know about the heat waves in uh, you know, in the British Columbia. I've been to British Columbia way back in 2000. Nine. It's one of the cool places, you know, especially in northern British Columbia, Saskatchewan area near Alaska. Very, very cold place. But yesterday's temperature is mind-boggling. 49 degrees Celsius with many death. You know, so it's, things are changing tremendously, friends. Next story is about toxic forever chemicals widespread in the top makeup brands. That is what the study finds, uh, you know, the, in, the, in the Guardian. So it's basically the uh, these are something called PFAS or PFAS or per polyfluorylated uh, alkyl substances the the so called forever chemical uh, the name is forever the PFAS because it's it, it's it you know it it simply uh, it doesn't degrade it it's a persistent uh, pollutant you know family of over nine thousand highly persistent chemicals uh, that don't occur in the nature so it is very common in uh, you know this uh, cosmetics right 23rd story a protein that found in robin's eye robin the bird its eyes has all the hallmarks of the magnetoreceptor and could help the birds navigate uh, using the earth's magnetic field very exciting isn't it the research revealed that the proteins fulfills several predictions for one of the leading quantum based theories for how avian magnetoreception might work Magnetoreception is detecting the magnetic field, and of course there are theories that says that even human beings have got this, uh, you know, this magnetoreception uh, organelle in our, uh, you know, uh, nasopharynx region. Well, we don't really have any proof for that. Twenty-fourth story: Orchids can make the fake pollen to tempt the bees and other pollinators. They make this fake pollen, you know, very interesting, right? Not the real pollen. Of course, they do have real pollen. They also make the fake pollen, you know, very tasty fake pollen. Uh, but the pseudo pollen isn't just an alluring counterfeit. Uh, scientists have sh now that shown that it is nutritious as the real thing. I wonder why do they actually have to make it, right? The answer is that the real pollen uh, you know, it, it's not digestible, right? If you make it digestible, then the purpose of pollen is gone. Pollen, of course, needs to be pollinated to the flower, isn't it? So instead of making the real pollen nutritious, they make a fake pollen to bribe. It's quid pro quo. You know, you have to bribe the honeybees, right? Exciting. 25th story, a study that dug into the history of Amazonian rainforest has found that indigenous people lived there for millions of, you know, millennia, thousands of years with causing no detectable species losses or disturbances. So the way the indigenous tribes have been living for thousands of years, uh, they're very sustainable friends. 
much sustainable than the university professors like me who speaks about sustainability while drive car. Well, I don't drive car though, but I know many people drive car, right? So I'm not actually criticizing only that, but yeah, uh, yeah, hats off to that indigenous community, their spirit, right? They're really, really sustainable. Their lifestyle is really sustainable. 26 stories about the scientists who discovered that the sharks nearly went extinct 19 million years back. Uh, by the way, sharks are really massive creatures, right? Uh, yeah, it's a super massive, like whales, of course. Uh, it really went extinct uh, almost a similar time of the dinosaurs went extinct. Uh, I mean, much later, it's 19 million years, right? Dinosaur went extinct much earlier in KT extinction event. It could be one of the biggest such mass extinction events since the disappearance of dinosaurs during Cretaceous period. The findings could be helpful to understand the declining modern day shark populations. Uh, yeah, why shark populations are being declining uh, around the world. That's really alarming. And experts believe that it's because of the climate change. Uh, 27 is pesticides are killing the world's soil. You know, they cause a significant harm to the earthworms, beetles, ground nesting bees, and thousands of vital subterranean species. Even uh, you know, soil microbes too, right? It could change uh, tremendously the, uh, the microbial community structure of the soil. Uh, 28. A new study finds that dinosaurs began declining 10 million years before the infamous asteroid hit. So that is basically KT extinction, no Cretaceous tertiary, mass extinction when at the uh, Yucatan uh, Peninsula in uh, Chihuahua in Mexico right so this is 10 million years earlier very interesting so it, it challenged our popular belief in how the dinosaur went extinct climate change may have been a significant factor for their decline that is what the researchers say very interesting 29 the first google translate for the elephants uh, debuts so this uh, the, the debut is basically it's not really google translate uh, but it can actually tell you what exactly the various uh, non-verbal plus verbal cues of the elephants what they communicate you know so the, the animal behavior the study of animal behavior is something called ethology and uh, this kind of communication uh, you know the uh, uh, formal communication the toolbox is something called ethogram you know so uh, you can actually see that the, the link is in the show notes it's called elephantvoices.org elephantvoices.org check out the show notes you can see all the links of this entire episode uh, in the show notes okay so uh, don't forget to check out the show notes too so this is a very interesting ethogram about elephant so you know the the way that the elephant's ear and the trunk movement plus the voices that make actually symbolizes so many interesting uh, you know communications so very interesting Coming next is about medicine, health, diagnostics, and nutrition related stories. Psilocybin therapy appears to be at least as effective as a leading conventional antidepressant. Of course, for depression therapy, psilocybin is, by, by the way, it's about, um, uh, you know, it's an active, uh, psychoactive ingredient of uh, magic mushroom. You know, the shroom, very common in Amsterdam, isn't it? If you have ever been to Amsterdam, you will see in coffee shops, they sell uh, these magic mushrooms. So psilocybin is, uh, you know, it could be very uh, important for depression uh, therapy. Very interesting, right? So Americans who start to exercise before or during the Middle Age typically save around $1,000 annually on health care cost after the retirement. Very interesting, right? So, you know, so as early as you start to exercise, you actually save a lot of money later. Exciting. And when you are young, you might be interested to save your money and uh, eat unhealthy because fast food is really relatively cheaper. But then you are paying a lot of money on to the, the health care cost that you will be incurring later. So uh, good cho healthy choices on your food, even though you spend a little bit higher, uh, you know, going for a healthy, nutritious, non fast food choices as young will pay heed in later in your life so as exercise you know 30 second story face mask are effective in blocking expire uh, you know expire means uh, when you uh, you know when you sneeze out airborne particles from talking and coughing even if 
they don't seal around the edges that is what the new study says that's very interesting you know even if this mask is not sealing properly it can still help you you know so attr amylodoys uh, you know in its current form using the lipid non uh, uh, particle vector it could only be potentially helpful for the diseases of the liver and spleen right even if it is limited to diseases where the genetic component is simple and does not require complete conversion of all the cell types so that is what another interesting story uh, of this particular uh, you know the this this about the crispr crispr cas for treatment for the blood right so the it treats the genetic disease for the first time so you can use this crispr genome editing for treating the genetic diseases even though uh, there are some limitations only in liver and spleen you can do that but still crispr cas is now used for uh, you know the the treatment very interesting 34th story is the research that, which included more than 70,000 children in six European cohorts found that children exposed to paracetamol before birth were 19 percentage more likely to develop the ASC that is autistic spectrum condition uh, and 24, 21 percentage more likely to develop ADHD that is attention deficit hyperactivity syndrome uh, symptoms than those who were not exposed. So paracetamol use in pregnancy can have adverse effect on your children. So be careful. 35. Room temperature edible vaccine mucorice CTB against the cholera through GM rice. Very interesting. It's a story from Chiba University and Tokyo University in Japan. They developed this rice, uh, you know, with the uh, recombinant rice, of course, uh, that that's edible and room temperature safe, which basically is a vaccine for cholera very exciting so now at phase one clinical trial uh, reports have come out the results of the phase one trials uh, very interesting isn't it 36 a new research that have discovered that the common artificial sweeteners can cause previously healthy gut microbes to become diseased and invade the gut wall potentially leading to serious health issues saccharin sucralose and aspartame are the you know those artificial sweeteners assist in this study so facultative uh, you know microbes which turns out to be pathogen uh, during the right conditions so the normal gut microbes are absolutely fine uh, till when you ingest this kind of diet soda for example containing saccharin or sucralose or aspartame then our normal gut microbe uh, turns out to be pathogenic so that is really alarming so uh, just stop using any artificial sweetener so normal sweeteners sugar is much better off than going for the diet cock you know 37 deposits of copper and magnetic iron found in alzheimer's patients brains researchers spotted the telltale glint of the copper and iron in their elemental forms using a form of x-ray microscopy that is called stxm on samples of the neural plaques taken from the frontal and temporal lobes of the Alzheimer's patients. So copper is really, really important, uh, you know, that can lead to uh, Alzheimer's disease. I keep on telling in my YouTube channel, so you can see that many of my videos, I emphasize that copper, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a cooking utensil is never a good idea. Never use copper uh, cooking utensils as well as the water bottles. You know, copper water bottle, if you're using, stop using it because copper can leach on to the water and can cause Alzheimer's disease or cuparitis too, you know. So copper uh, on, uh, you know, the door knob, for example, surfaces are perfectly fine because you're not really ingesting it, right? Copper is toxic, so beware of it. Okay, 38 stories that the new research shows that the brains of the people who died from COVID-19 look terrifyingly similar to the brains of the people who died from neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So there are a lot of uh, neurodegenerative potential of the COVID-19, especially in bad, uh, you know, uh, uh, occurrence of COVID-19. Uh, you know, it can have a serious ramifications on the, the brain. Right. And even the brain fog, which we covered in the earlier episodes of the curiosity, you know, COVID-19 infection can lead to the brain fog. So beware of it. Uh, beware in the sense that uh, if you 
you know, if you haven't been infected, that's what, like me, and never got infected with COVID-19. I'm really religious with precautions. So if you're like me, then take adequate precaution. I got my two vaccine shots and still I wear mask whenever I, I go to in, go into all public spaces. I keep distances, the social distances. I avoid unnecessary travel, so just do it. 39th story is a brisk walking for two and a half hours a week could prevent early death caused by lack of sleep. So, you know, it's kind of controversial. Lack of sleep uh, is a leading cause of death, you see. So it, it, it has huge ramifications on overall, uh, you know, uh, physical as well as mental well-being. Uh, sleep is really important. Now, if you ever uh, have this bad uh, night sleep, then you can compensate by brisk walking. That is what this study says. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't really want to trust this entire study. But yeah, brisk walking is important. You know, so practice it. At least brisk walk for uh, two and a half hours a week. One week, two and a half. Uh, usually I walk almost every single day for one hour the brisk walking morning and evening so yeah do it you know walking is really easy anybody can do it and you can combine that with some other activity like podcast or audio books right uh, 40th story of the week is that uh, very good news from china china is now certified malaria free country they have been struggling with malaria for the last 70 years and they achieved this feat uh, the WHO has, re, uh, you know, uh, last week it they declared malaria as uh, China as malaria-free, completely malaria-free country. Exciting, isn't it? If China can do it, why not the rest of the country, especially here in India and many of the African nations? The malaria I got infected with malaria during my early twenties, twenties, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it is really terrifying disease, malaria, and it's a leading cause of death. Uh, you, you won't even believe that uh, more than half of the humankind ever lived on planet Earth, ever lived, died of malaria. You know, more than half of the death till date is because of the malaria alone. Very interesting, isn't it? So, yeah, it's good. Good news from the China and hopefully it's good news uh, uh, elsewhere in the world as well. Uh, if we can follow the footsteps of the China, how they achieved it. That's it for this week and now coming to observances. So, you know, so there's several observances coming. So this is, uh, uh, of course, observance of the J July. This is a July episode, right? By the way, this is my July. I have a journal, uh, which, you know, this is how my journal looks like. You know, this is basically memento mori, means think of death. You know, this is how, this is a custom made, uh, uh, this one, the journal with the leather. You know, and this is Memento Mori and Copy Time, two of the, the mantra which I, I like to follow in my life. So think of death. Death is what brings meaning to your life, isn't it? So this is my July cover. You can see that the cover of the July. Uh, maybe this is more clearer. The July with lots of flowers behind. So July is exciting month, friends. So what, what to be expected in the month of July? 11 July is World Population Day. You know, population is increasing and many countries are, uh, you know, suffering because of the uh, higher population and uh, because of the lower population as well. That China recently, last month only, they revised their policy. Earlier, the policies are only one child per family. Now, they increase to up to two. You can have two children because the population is now coming to the, you know, it's, it's, it's coming to uh, stationary phase while the countries like Japan, People are not even having babies, right? We have covered that in this episode that the, uh, you know, voluntary, voluntarily deciding not to have children. So those people are not really loners. Uh, they are perfectly fine and they're they are pretty happy. That is what the new study says, right? So 11th is World Population Day, right? To think about, uh, to introspect about the population explosion and importance of the human collective potentials. 15th is World Youth Skills Day. Yes, this show as well, the Curiosity Show, as well as our Young Academy of India, YAI, is targeted to the youth of India, friends, and the world. You know, skill imparting to the youth is really important uh, for the future of our country and the world. You know, so the skills, uh, we are actually moving from traditional degree-oriented to 
you know, goal oriented or skill oriented uh, jobscape in the 21st century. So skills are really important. 20th uh, of this month is World Chess Day. I love playing chess. I still do play chess. And yeah, this is the day. If you like to play online chess, why not? You can give a try. Or you can play with the, uh, you know, the, the softwares like Fritz, you know, the, the, the chess software. Yeah. 30th is International Day of Friendship. Yes, we all uh, like to have friends, right? The friends are really important. One of the key pillars of psychological health and mental well-being. So let's celebrate 30th International Day of Friendship. And now coming to astronomy related observances, uh, mind that all these are only for binocular object, okay? If you have a binocular, you can see everything. So you don't really need any um, uh, high-end telescopes, you know, spotting scope or binocular, you can see it. 6th of July, you can see, uh, it's not sea, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an event of the Earth, very important day for the, our planet Earth. It's called aphelion, you know. Uh, perihelion and aphelion these two things right near to the sun and farthest from the sun uh, aphelion is basically we are farthest from the sun and still it's the mid of summer isn't it but we are really far from the sun and uh, perihelion is the, the the point where we are really near to the sun in uh, you know in the uh, revolution around the the planetary revolution around the sun isn't it so aphelion is sixth in here in india midnight so 7th is Comet 15P of Finlay, you can spot. 9th is Morning Star Mercury at its highest point in morning sky. It's an exciting time to spot the Mercury. 12th is Conjunction of Moon, Venus and Mars. So three things, three astronomical uh, bodies uh, comes very close together. Conjunction, right? 20th is the Moon Landing Day, Apollo 11th. Uh, you know, way back in 1969, uh, July 20th is when humanities ever landed set their foot in the moon right 24th is full moon day 24th is also conjunction of moon and saturn you know so on on this full moon day you can see the moon uh, with saturn in it. it's very interesting i'm really looking forward to take a nice pic and i'm going to share with you all in the yai web page check it out it's again there in the short notes okay 26th is conjunction of moons and Jupiter. So to, it's a great day to watch the Jupiter. And 28th is the peak of Sisis astronaut meteor shower. So in the, you know, in the, in the, in the Pisces uh, constellation, you can see this kind of uh, meteor shower originating from that uh, Pisces constellation. And 30th is the peak of Saturn, Delta, Aquarid, and Alpha Caprionid meteor shower. So two kinds of meteor showers together you know, uh, in this one. So it's, it's pretty exciting, isn't it? So by the way, Yai page, uh, you know, the Young Academy of India has got a, a Facebook page with more than 5,000 members to know. And uh, please do subscribe to our, uh, the page uh, because you can see all these stories. Uh, you will notice, if you're already a member, you will notice that most of the stories have already been featured on the, the day of when the story comes up, right? We have active moderators in it. And we share the, these kind of stories as and when the stories are published, right? So it's like a real-time update, right? So, you know, uh, all kinds of curiosity-driven research, not merely for uh, the sciences, but also for humanities and arts and entertainment or everything, right? Uh, curiosity is our main focus, right? Just like this show, right? So do subscribe to our page and uh, uh, link for uh, our page as well as for the stories featured in this episode are in the show notes. And also, please do check the show notes because there are a, a, a large number of, uh, you know, the large number of uh, opportunities are there for the students for this month. For example, I'll just show you. This is the link that you can see that curiosity opportunities in the July. This is basically a, a, a you know, a Google Sheet. So you can see that ICMR JRF, a DAD Fellowship, University of Brunei. A Fulbright Nehru scholarship, the call is open. All these are there. That's all these are basically deadlines that falls on July. And here are the link, direct link. You can just with one click and apply for it. And uh, a PhD fellowship in uh, Germany, uh, JRF and uh, Rhodes University scholarship, Team Science Grant. Uh, you know, Tivas Biotech Postdoc Fellowship, Tivas CSAR. Tivas, by the way, is a very, very prestigious academy, the, the World Academy of Sciences, right? NIT Rurkala ICGB, 
the World Diabetes Foundation. I mean, it's a, it's a lot. Various NIH grants, you can say Safari Grant, Japan Water Forum Grant, you know, uh, USAID Discovery Grant, DST Technology, Splice Climate Change Program. I mean, it's a lot. Okay, there are 41 calls. The link is in the show notes. Please do check. Please apply for it. You know, uh, because that's really important for uh, you know this uh, particular uh, uh, the the skills of the country, isn't it? So uh, yes, so do apply and uh, seek out for all the kinds of opportunities. Uh, let us build the nation by uh, working for the science and working for uh, the right cause. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this month's episode of the Curious, the July episode and I will see you soon with August show with exciting developments in the world of science, technology, medicine, arts and humanities. And uh, please do take care and if you can, please take care of someone else too. Till then, goodbye.